my name is Kate and welcome to Habits of a Modern Hippie. It is Samoyed Sundays and because right now I am in Nantucket for a good friend's bachelorette party, I thought it would be fun to film a little Q&A for you guys with the girls. So I asked you guys to send me questions on both Instagram and Snapchat and I realize that most of the questions came in three categories and a lot of questions they were double or triple or quadruple up. So I'm just going to go ahead and say a couple of things in each category. The first is grooming slash heat because summer's coming up. The second is what kind of food they eat and the third is a little bit around training. And starting with the questions, let's go ahead and start with probably my most frequently asked question, and that is, are the girls hyperallergenic? So as a breed, Samoyeds are technically hyperallergenic. Um, the reason that is is because they have hair instead of fur, and they don't produce as much dander as lots of dogs. So for people with mild dog allergies, if they're not allergic to the saliva, then yes, Samoyeds are good dogs for them. However, you do have to take into account the fact that Samoyeds shed a lot. So depending on how severe your allergies are, if you have asthma, things like that, the amount of fur in the air and around, and as you can see, it just kind of floats out all the time, especially in spring and fall. So it can get a little interesting and make it a little bit hard to breathe. So that's something that you'll definitely have to test out. And going along with that spring, I get lots of questions about when the girls shed and whether or not they can deal with hot temperatures. Because my girls come from a show dog line, they are bred to have a little bit more fur and a little bit longer at that, just to make them look extra snazzy in the ring. I don't show my girls, but they have the fur for sh to show for it. But they usually shed, Samoids in general will shed, once in the spring and once in the fall, and they'll shed their entire coat. If you look at the difference between Tinkerbell and Miko, Tinkerbell is spayed, and oftentimes that leads to an extra fluffy coat for the girls. So Tink has lots and lots of fur, whereas Miko, while she weighs more than Tinkerbell, she's got a lot less fur. But that's just because Miko just shed her entire coat. And when that spring shed comes, people ask, oh, is it really that much fur? I'll put a clip up here somewhere. But yes, it is really that much fur. It's an insane amount of work. Even if you go get them groomed, you'll have to get them groomed multiple times to get all of the fur out. And even still, you will still have some fuzzies flying around. So yes, it is a ton of fur. But the most frequently asked question is what tool I'm using. And this is a wide tooth comb. I use this to get all of the fur out of the girls. And then I use a slicker brush as well, but this is the main one. I'll leave a link to this on Amazon down below. I know when a lot of people think of lots of fur, they go straight for the Furminator, but I do not recommend a Furminator for Samoyeds. It's great for a lot of different dogs, but because of the way Samoyeds hair is, the cutting blade in a Furminator is actually going to dull their fur and make it a lot less shiny. Coming off those spring sheds, I get lots of questions on whether or not Samoyeds can do well in hot climates. In my experience, they can. I know that my girls are a lot happier in the fall and winter, and I've owned a Samoyed when I lived in Florida before, and so it does work because the dogs are super adaptable. You just want to make sure that you have really great access to cold air, aka air conditioning and things like that, because they do overheat and you cannot, absolutely cannot shave a Samoyed. They drop their inner coat, but those thick outer hairs keep them from getting sunburned, keep them um, um, cool and hot. It's really great for temperature regulation, so if you shave them, it's a big deal. You don't want that to happen. And last, I get lots of questions about Miko's tear stain. Now, tear stains can come from a bunch of different reasons, um, but generally it boils down to body chemistry. So Miko gets tear stains when she goes on antibiotics, if she has like a urinary tract infection or something like that. And when that happens, I give her a little bit of probiotics and to help even out that body chemistry, 
I add a splash of apple cider vinegar into her water. Always before you do anything, you change your pup's diet, talk to your vet. Just want to make sure that that's great for your dog. Um, I've never had an issue with the apple cider. It's just a tiny little splash in their water bowl and that helps kind of even out the pH level of their body, which is why the little stain can happen. However, right now that's not going to help because Miko has really bad spring allergies and it's just going to happen. There are lots of products out there that can help with tear staining. One that I'm using right now just to make sure that the staining it doesn't get too bad until her allergy bout is over is the Eye Wipes from Earth Bath. This is the same brand I use of their shampoo. It's a really great company. It's really eco-friendly, all of that. But yeah, so these have been nice just to keep the staining down. It's just going to keep coming back until her allergies are over. And of course, if you want to see more about all of the grooming, everything that I do, once again, there is that full grooming video linked below. The second question I get asked all the time, which is actually in my first Q&A as well, is what kind of food do the girls eat? And it's hard for me just to give one answer. I will give a brand instead. I use I and Love and You. Brought out a little bag because I'm not about to bring their giant bag out. But it's this brand. They are now sponsored by them because they knew how much we loved them. But they, the kibble they use is the red meat medley. Really like the ingredients in this. I think it's really great. Um, they do have probiotics. It's whole foods. There's no wheat or grain in here. It's a really, really great food. And then... They also get the I and Love and You raw food as well. This is dehydrated food and you can add water to this and either mix it with the kibble or feed it on its own. This is chock full of veggies. You can see the whole chunks of veggies. It's a really nice food. And I get lots of questions about the probiotics. So there are probiotics in their food. However, when the girls are on antibiotics or aren't feeling really great, I do supplement with a little bit of probiotic as well. The one I use is prescribed by their vet. It is the Purina Pro Plan, um, it is the Purina Pro Plan 40 Flora. Um, talk to your vet if you think your pup needs a little bit extra probiotics. I know there are lots of different probiotics on the market, but I haven't really seen a need for them quite yet just because they do eat quite a large variety of foods that are both whole foods and things like that. And if you're looking for a probiotic source without having to go to your vet, you can always add a little bit of no sugar added yogurt on into their food. They think it's tasty, it's really great, you just don't want the sugar in there. I actually have a recipe for I actually have a recipe for dog treats that is great for summer using yogurt. It's a frozen yogurt with a little bit of fruit. Really good for the girls as well. And I'll link that below. And the last few questions are all about training. I see a lot of you have gotten new puppies recently, which is so exciting and have so much fun with that. But we'll start out with tips for bringing your pups home. I did a video on this. Um, so that will be linked up below, but we'll just quickly go over a couple of those. First is when you're bringing a puppy into a home with another pet, whether that be a dog or a cat, you want to let them meet on a neutral territory. <laughs> Long story short, when I brought Miko home, I was terrified because the first time Tinkerbell saw Miko, she growled at her, like straight up had, didn't want anything to do with her. And I called my mother freaking out, what on earth am I going to do? But there's actually a little video of here and I'll see if I can find it and I'll put it up in the corner. But so meeting in a neutral place where neither of the animals is gonna feel territorial is really great. Especially if that's outside, outside your house, outside your apartment, just somewhere nice. Tinker. And then slowly integrate the dogs into each other's lives. Some ways are super sweet. I did not have an issue after that original growl tink warmed right up to Miko. And one of the questions that I always get as well is, do the dogs really love each other that much? And the answer is yes. If where one is, the other one is going to be, they snuggle up together, they sleep on top of each other, 
They love each other and it is wonderful. Next, I get asked about barking. So, Samoyeds are notoriously a very, very vocal breed. That is never going to change. They are always going to be vocal. And I get asked all the time if you can train it out of them. So the answer is yes and no. They are still going to talk back to you. They're still going to woo back at you. They, every morning, Miko and Tinkerbell both woo at me to wake up. But you can train them not to bark when you leave. So that's super helpful. The way I train my girls is positive reinforcement. So I essentially ignore them if they are being bad, and when they do something good, they get rewarded for it. So when it came to barking, I used that same method. When they barked, I would totally ignore her, especially if she was barking at me or wanted me to open the door or something like that. Totally ignore her. When she got quiet and went lie down, I would give them a treat. So that same thing works with so many different training methods. And a barking segue is a nice end to crate training. I feel like crate training is different for every dog. Samoyeds do love caves, so they do like small dark places, and the girls will go into a crate if that feels good for them um, on their own. I have never had to crate Tinkerbell. She started out as a puppy on my bed with quite a few little accidents up there as well. But I never had to deal with her eating anything, things like that. She was just a very, very chill puppy. Miko, on the other hand, is still a little crazy. Um, Miko gets crated every time I leave because she, um, even after she was potty trained, she decided it would be a wonderful idea to eat anything that was remotely like grass. She would eat my seagrass placemats. She ate parts of the couch. And finally, the last straw is she decided it would be a great idea to jump up onto my seagrass armchair and eat a hole at face level all the way through the back. Not just like a little piece, she ate a hole through the chair. So Miko, my little chewer, which nothing could stop her, gets crated every time we leave. Crate training is fairly simple. Because they do like the cave feel, all you have to do is get them used to the crate. So first make it comfortable, add their favorite toy, add in a blanket, whatever they like, and then just let them figure it out on their own. So they'll start to wander into the crate and be like, oh, this is nice, I'll go ahead and lie down in here. And just get them used to it. Then after that, you can start closing the door. And then after that, Close the door when you are staying in the room, just so they can't get out but they know you're around. So then you can close the door and leave the room and have them get used to that and then slowly longer and longer times. So Miko now loves her crate. Tinkerbell still doesn't sleep in one. I, I make sure that Tink and Miko are in the same room so the crate's in my bedroom and Tink hangs out on my bed when I am gone and Miko will be in that crate. And rule of thumb for leaving puppies alone for a lot of you with new puppies is the amount of months old they are is the amount of hours they can stay home alone <laughs> without having to go outside. So four month old puppy, four hours, six month old, six hours, stuff like that. But I wouldn't recommend leaving your dog any longer than eight hours ever. If you're working and you need to do that and you can't get home at lunch, I would recommend getting a dog walker or a friend just to let them out, especially because Samoyeds need so much exercise. And, and as I just mentioned, Tinkerbell does hang out on the bed. As you can see, they're on my couch. Both of my girls are welcome on the furniture because they're spoiled. <laughs> but I get questions about whether I clean their feet every time they come in. Once again, the answer is yes and no. I have very, very durable couches, so I can strip these off, pop them in the washer, clean those right up, which is really nice. And I also, if it's muddy or wet and all of that, I keep a microfiber towel and wipe down their feet before that happens. And they know if they're super wet, they're not supposed to go on the couches or furniture. So if they just came in from the snow, generally speaking, they'll go lie down on their bed or on the floor first. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that was super long-winded, but if you still have any questions, you want me to do a part three, 
of this. Make sure to leave any of those questions in the comments below and I'll definitely do one of these again soon. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't been here before and you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you again soon. Bye! We're going to start out with just a little bit of background info on the girls. They get a lot of the same questions all the time. So, let's go ahead. So first off, this is Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell is four. She was born.